I thought it would be a fun idea to dedicate an episode to a god or goddess each month. This episode will serve as a little introduction to the deity, maybe discuss one or two of their myths briefly, and if I can, I would also like to share my personal experiences. The Truskins called the month of September Sally in their language. I had started writing this episode in September, but it may not be posted until October now. Regardless, I still want to introduce my lovely listeners today to the Etruscan goddess of the earth, Cell. Hello and welcome to the revamped Flowers for Gods podcast. I had originally planned to start this podcast again much sooner, but life does not always work out as we planned. So now that I am in a better place in my own life, I am restarting this podcast. So Flowers for Gods is a podcast about modern day polytheism and paganism where I hope to explore ancient mythology and talk about worshiping the gods in today's world. I would also like to share some of my own personal experiences. This podcast also corresponds with my blog, flowersforgods.com. My name is Marisa. You may also call me by my religious name, which is Lucia Maria Silvana, and I also go by Lisa, if you want to use that name. Thank you for joining me for this episode, and let's dive into today's topic, the Etruscan goddess Sel. Sel is the Etruscan goddess of the earth. As such, she is an agricultural and fertility type of goddess. She was often associated with the Greek goddess Gaia, or the Roman goddess Talus, also called Terra Mater, which literally means Mother Earth in Latin. I've also seen Sal associated with Ceres, mainly due to both goddesses having a connection with the earth and fertility as it relates to crops and the harvest. Personally, I treat Sal as a goddess independent from Telus, Gaia, and Ceres. A lot of Etruscan deities found their way into the Roman pantheon. Pantheons were much more open in ancient times than how we think about them today. So a lot of Etruscan deities enter the Roman pantheon. My lovely Vertumus is one such god, but that's a podcast and a blog post for another day. So, some people might consider Sel to be an earlier name for Talus, for example. I, again, just personally, take the approach that Sel is a separate goddess. I tend to be more of a hard polytheist, treating all of the gods as separate entities and deities, with some exceptions, such as Apollo, but of course, nothing is ever that simple and clear-cut. Regardless, the Etruscan goddess, like her counterparts, has a connection to the earth and fertility. September was an important agricultural and harvest month to the Etruscans. She most likely had a festival during this month as well. While there is no hard evidence of a festival for sale during this month, it's mostly speculation, September is the month when fall starts. There are also many other harvest festivals happening between August and October, so it does make sense that a festival for sale might have taken place during this month. If you're looking for a goddess to reach out to during the autumn e- equinox, why not introduce yourself to Sel? Sel's connection to the earth comes from her title Sel Ati, which translates to Mother Earth. In one depiction of the goddess, she is shown with her lower body made up of plants and vegetation, thus cementing her connection to the earth and agriculture. Many agricultural gods and goddesses also have a connection to fertility, both of the land and in the sense of reproductive fertility. We see this when it comes to both the Roman goddesses Telus and Ceres, as well as when it comes to other agricultural harvest deities from other pantheons. As such, Sel is a goddess to pray to in all matters of fertility, whether it relates to human fertility or fertility of the crops and the harvest. I only recently officially welcomed Etruscan deities into my home and religious practice. Both Sal and Tehran, the goddess of love, have an official spot on my household shrine now. I am a devotee of Ceres myself. I was learning how to be her priest at one point, but I had to put that on pause due to personal reasons. But as a devotee of an agricultural goddess, I seem to attract a lot of goddesses who sort of have the same associations or the same domain, so to speak. So of course, I've reached out to sell and placed on my altar with gifts of flowers and incense. Unlike Telus, who I feel is the quiet earth, the womb of creation. I feel like Cell is more on the wild side. That is, she is the growth of the plants and vegetation. She literally walks and from her feet sprouts vines, stalks, weeds, and life. She's active. She's wild. She makes the earth spring to life with a swiftness. Much like Gaia, Cell has also been called the mother of giants. The Greeks and Greek mythology did influence the Etruscans to some extent. It is thought that the gods were not really portrayed until the Etruscans borrowed Greek imagery of their deities. The giants, much like the Greek imagery of giants, were at times depicted with snake legs. In my opinion, this seems to be a clear influence from Greek mythology. There is another relief showing a figure labeled Silens, C-I-L-E-N-S, next to a figure labeled Mera. Mera is the goddess 
uh, Menvra, who was associated with Minerva, the Roman goddess of war and wisdom. I've also seen this figure labeled Silens be associated with both Cell and Salus Nocturnus, the, the god of the night sky. And I do apologize if I'm mispronouncing some of those names. I don't really speak Latin, nor do I speak the ancient Etruscan language. But regardless, um, the Selene's figure in this relief has the body of a female. But that would not have been a huge concern to Etruscans, who were already depicting Artumis as both male and female. Artumis is thought to be the Etruscan counterpart to Artemis, by the way. So the point is, while the god of the night sky is seen as male, it would not be so unusual if he was also depicted as female at one point. So this figure is still undecided of who exactly it is. We don't really know who this Silens figure is supposed to represent, but I thought this little bit of research that I came across was interesting. Sadly, it does not seem like any mythology involving Cell has remained. I'm not that surprised though, neither, neither Talus nor Ceres have a lot of myths on their own that have survived. It seems like agricultural and earthly deities were more actively prayed to when it was time, but did not inspire a lot of mythology, although we could be missing a lot of work that's just been lost to time. Uh, the most famous myth associated with Ceres actually comes from the Greek myth of Demeter searching for her kidnapped daughter Persephone. So a lot of original myth from what is now modern day Italy does not seem to have really survived in its own. Uh, for the Etruscans who believed visible phenomena work manifestations of divine power, the earth most certainly was divine though. Um, another interesting fact is that Cell appears on the liver of Piacenza, a bronze model of a sheep's liver, labeled for divination and ritual purposes. The fact that Cell is on the liver, house 13 for anyone who's curious, shows that she played a role in predicting omens. She may have also been given gifts and offerings in order in order to prevent bad omens from happening. The Etruscans had a strong belief in destiny and fate, especially as it related to the divine powers of the world. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Flowers for Gods podcast. If you're interested in appearing as a guest on this podcast or having your book, blog, and so on featured, please reach out to me at lucia at flowersforgods.com. That's L-U-C-I-A at flowersforgods.com. You can also find me on Instagram at flowersforgods, on Twitter at longoratayler, and on Tumblr as flowersforgods.tumblr.com. Please also check out the blog at flowersforgods.com gods.com for more pagan related posts, book reviews, and artwork. Thank you, and I hope to see you in the next episode.